A UN drug study shows that 40% of adult Australians have used illicit drugs, but how does this affect any insurance applications? In my 14 years, I've completed thousands of insurance applications, so I've pretty much seen it all when it comes to disclosure. Stay tuned and I'll share with you my top tips for avoiding having your claim rejected. Hi there, it's Craig Bigelow, the founder and head insurance advisor here at True Pride. If you're new to the channel, we bring out three videos a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to help make insurance easy. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. A recent study conducted by the UN into drug use worldwide showed that 40% of adult Australians had used illicit drugs in the past. Glorified in movies, um, professional athletes, and splashed all over our newspapers, it's part of our culture. In this video, I share with you five key things about the way that the insurance companies deal with these applications and their stance on illicit drug use. The first thing to understand is that insurance contracts worked on, work on an honesty policy. This means that the insurance companies rely on you to tell them everything that they need to know to make a reasonable assessment about your insurance application. In a previous video, I've described this in a little bit more detail, so I'll pop link to the, a link to the card above. But basically, the duty of disclosure puts the onus on you to be upfront with the insurance companies about anything that is reasonable that you would remember. Um, this isn't to say that you have to recall every single time that you've been to the doctor for anything minor, but really, anything that's been major in the past that you've required ongoing medical treatment for, whether that be um, specialist treatment, medication, that sort of thing, um, these are the things that you'll need to note on any insurance application that you make. That is your duty of disclosure to the insurance company so that they can make a reasonable assessment on your application. Part of any insurance application that you complete will include a question around the use of illicit drugs and previous use of illicit drugs. Now when it comes to this, my advice is always, as everything else, play this with a straight bat. By being completely honest with the insurance company, you remove that risk of being rejected a claim should anything happen to you. The next question you're probably asking though is how will the insurance companies assess your application if you do disclose that you've used illicit drugs in the past? The second important thing to note when it comes to an insurance application with the use of illicit drugs in the past is that there's three main categories for drug use. I've researched this with various insurance providers and they've given me the facts around the three levels. Now the first level is marijuana um, and cannabis use. The second level is sort of cocaine, ecstasy, those sorts of things. And the third level is around heroin and those related style drugs. Each of these different categories or class of drugs will have a different way that the insurance companies assess them. For example, marijuana use would be treated more favorably in terms of the time that needs to have elapsed between the last time you used it versus the use of heroin. And the outcome that you'll get will be significantly different in both of those scenarios. In the next part, I'll share with you a little bit about how the insurance company will look at the assessment and potentially some of the outcomes that they'll come back to you with. Once you've disclosed to the insurance companies that you have used illicit drugs in the past, they're gonna come back to you with a series of questions and wanna know a bit more information from you about the type of drug use and the habits around that. To give you an idea, here's a form that's from one of the insurance companies to give you an idea of the questions that they ask. So first of all, they're going to ask for the type of substance that you've used in the past, the frequency of use, the time since you've last uh, used these drugs, and also the impact of that, of any medical treatment or symptoms or ongoing symptoms that you've suffered as a result of taking these drugs. What they're looking for here is just more information around the drug use so that they can make a further assessment as to where they feel the risk lies from their perspective as an insurance company. The main things that the insurance company are looking for here are number one, what type of drugs did you use in the past? Number two, how long ago did you last use these drugs? And number three, what did your drug use look like at the time? In addition to just looking at the drug use, the insurance companies look at your medical history as a whole. So they're going to look for anything that they deem to be associated medical uh, incidents such as mental health, which is becoming more and more prevalent. So as a whole, the picture is going to come back to the insurance company and help them make a final decision. In addition to just looking at the drug use, the insurance companies look at your medical history as a whole. So they're going to look for anything that they deem to be associated medical uh, incidents, such as mental health, which is becoming more and more prevalent. So as a whole, the picture is going to come back to the insurance company and help them make a final decision. Knowing these three things are going to help the insurance company make a decision, which could be anything from standard rates, meaning that there's no change to your policy as a result of your drug use. Number two, a loading, which means that they'll charge you more as a result of your drug use. Or the third option being a decline and not being able to proceed with your application at this stage, given the nature of your drug use itself. 
The fourth thing to know is how the insurance companies can actually check up on your answers and make sure that you're telling the truth. As I mentioned earlier, the insurance companies rely on you to tell them the truth using that duty of disclosure when they're offering contracts to you and offering you a policy up front. But what happens at claim time is significantly different. One of the first things that the insurance companies do when you put in your application for a claim is write to Medicare to get the full list of your medical history in the lead up to your application. If you're unsure of what your medical history might look like, you can go to the Department of Human Services website and follow the prompts there for accessing a list of everything that's on your Medicare history. There's two ways to do this. If it's within the last three years, the information will be collected and stored on MyGov. So if you haven't already, already registered, you can do that via the My, MyGov website. Alternatively, there's a form that you can send off that is for Medicare records that are prior to three years ago. I'll include both of the details in the links below. For most people that I deal with, they're honest people and they don't mean to deceive the insurance companies. But in some rare cases, there has been a known deceit that you knew about that you didn't tell the insurance companies about. And that's where the problem arises. In this scenario where the insurance company can prove that you knowingly lied or knowingly deceived them about your previous medical history, what do you think happens with a claim in that event? So the fifth point here is looking at what happens if in the event of a claim, the insurance company does their research and finds that you've knowingly lied or knowingly deceived them about your previous medical history. In this event, there's one of two scenarios that can happen. The first scenario is if you've already received payments from the insurance company and they've approved your claim before proving that you've deceived them or lied to them in the past. In this scenario, if you've already received benefits from the insurance company, they're going to ask for those back. But what they will do is they'll credit you the premiums that you've paid for the life of the policy and basically void it as if it never happened. In the second scenario, you haven't received any benefits from the insurance company yet and they're still assessing your claim and they work out that you haven't told them the truth through the application process. In this scenario, they'll refund all of the premiums that you've paid from the start of the policy, essentially making it as if this policy had never happened as well. As mentioned in the UN report, with up to 40% of the population having tried illicit drugs, I asked the insurance companies why they didn't see 40% of the applications coming through with a notification to them that they had tried illicit drugs in the past. My belief is that there is definitely a stigma and fear around drug use and the effect that this might have on your applications. And what I'm hoping to do with this video is just shed a little bit of light on how the insurance companies will deem your application and ask the questions needed to clarify exactly what was done in the past and also give you a policy that's fair based on where you're at currently. Hey there, it's Biggs. Thanks for checking out the video. If you like these videos and you want to see more, we bring out a new video around the insurance topic every weekday. So hit that subscribe button next to me. Be notified when we release these videos. We love your support. We're here to build the community, community and we want to bring you more videos. Thanks again for tuning in. I'll chat to you soon.